Hello and welcome again to Weird Catholic Things Season 4. We hope that you are still enjoying and celebrating this season of Easter. Yeah, so Kevin, did you know that Easter is actually 50 days? 50 days, that's right. And you know what's amazing about that is, first of all, that Lent was 40 days. So mm -hmm. while we entered into our penance for 40 days, we celebrate the joy of the resurrection for even like longer than that. 50 days, right? <laughs> It's, awesome. it's amazing. It's going to go on for a long time. So. Yes. But we, we also, as we talked about last week a little bit with that octave of Easter, we, we get to celebrate in a special way for those eight days where it's kind of like it's all one, one continuous day of celebrating Isn't that Easter. Crazy? Kind of in a similar yeah. way to, uh, we, we spoke about last season how the Triduum is three days. It literally means three days, but it's kind of all one liturgical day. Mm -hmm. In a similar way, the octave of Easter, we're just celebrating again that joy of the resurrection for eight straight days. But we get even more than that because we get this whole season of Easter that goes on for 50 days. We are an Easter people. Our joy is in the resurrection. Hallelujah. Keep saying is our it. Song. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, throughout the octave of Easter, of course, the, the readings for Mass change, mm -hmm. but we're still celebrating that one mystery. And then during the season of Easter, we actually have a, a, some, an interesting change as far as the readings go at Mass, whereas Normally, if, you, if you're a daily mass goer, you know that the first reading comes from the Old Testament, generally speaking. Well, throughout the season of Easter, our first reading comes from the Acts of the Apostles. Oh. And it's kind of this beautiful way to see the impact of the resurrection and, and really on the, of Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit too, oh. on the, er, the, the life of the early church, the apostles, and how they responded, you know, how this event of Christ's resurrection changed their lives and, and transformed them. That's awesome. I don't think I'd ever really recognized that before. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. And then to see the the apostles by getting to read that, it's kind of like I don't know having like a front seat to like like a live action movie. Like yeah. getting to see like the early church and what was happening back mm -hmm. then and how the apostles were changed. Like from these men who ran away scared. Yeah. You know, at one point when like when Jesus was being led to the crucifixion, and then like even afterwards that they were hiding in fear, but then seeing the change that came over them yeah. and how their impact and their faith changed the world. Yeah. I so I encourage you, if, yeah. even if you're not going to daily mass, maybe read the Acts of the Apostles yeah. during the season of Easter, because it's very powerful to hear what all the apostles did in those early days. So, the, so as we talk about some of those liturgical, spiritual things, we also just have some fun ways of celebrating Easter and, and, and uh, expressing all that joy. So Hannah, why don't you talk to us about one of those ways? Yeah, so one of those is called cascarones, which is a Mexican Catholic tradition um, where you take little Easter eggs, so we take it a step farther than your normal Easter eggs, That's right. and they're filled with confetti. And so you can hide them, you can run around, you can smash them on someone's smash head. Smash them over your siblings' head, that's right. <laughs> but they, they're, you know, eggs have traditionally always been a symbol for new life. You know, like the, from way back, even from the dawn of time, people have seen eggs as symbolizing new life, rebirth, babies, like, right. uh, like all, what was the quote, Kevin, that you always say? Right, so it's amazing that even in the, uh, in the early times of, Jesus' day where the, the, Roman, the Roman people were the, the rulers and in that, in that culture there was this phrase that all life comes That's from an it. egg. That's yeah, it. all life comes from an egg. So it's already this deep, uh, this, this powerful symbol of, of new life and so that's why we associate it with Easter because especially when you look at an egg, you know, it, it looks basically just like a stone or a rock. I mean something that's lifeless, it's cold on the outside mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden life just explodes, bursts mm -hmm. forth from it. And so the it's that, that, well, the confetti. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, literally the egg, you know, the, the, the bird bursts forth, but then if you fill it with confetti, you get even more fun when the confetti bursts forth. And so yeah. it becomes this powerful symbol of Christ, you know, breaking forth from the tomb and, uh, and the, the joy of that, of that new life that we have through, through him. That's awesome. That's yeah. so cool. That's yeah, and, and as a bonus, I mean, smashing confetti-filled eggs Always over your siblings' fun. head is just fun. You know, I mean, I think actually after the Easter vigil, we had some people smashing them back in the in the narthex, and Father was like, yeah, "We got to clean that up." You know? so there's confetti everywhere. That's a good point. Do your cascarones outside. That's right. But while you do, remember um, that Easter is still going. That this is a time of celebration. That don't let that that celebration end a couple yeah. weeks ago. Uh, but to continue that going on. 
That's exactly right. 50 full days of Easter. Let's enjoy it. <laughs> so that's a little bit about our Easter season and celebrating even in these goofy ways with confetti-filled eggs, but it's all part of that spiritual joy that we experience in the resurrection of our Lord. So until next time. <laughs>